Coming up on today's Nightly News. EU budget talks collapse after request for 9 billion euros to fill the funding gap. EU military headquarters plans are backed by Baroness Ashton. An EU rules change will bring more migrants. Multi-annual financial framework for the years 2014 to 2020. And in our articles section, we have a letter from Trevor Coleman about police commissioner elections. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. EU budget talks collapsed after request for €9 billion Euros to fill the funding gap. Talks on the European Union's budget for next year collapsed in acrimony on Friday, denting hopes of a swift deal later this month on the bigger issue of the bloc's long-term spending for 2014 to 2020. Negotiators for EU governments and the European Parliament walked out without even discussing next year's spending blueprint after eight hours of fighting over a request for €9 billion Euros in extra cash to fill a funding gap this year. Now, it's hardly surprising that this has happened. It's getting ever harder to paper over the cracks. Many nation-states' finances are in tatters. The EU must be having a laugh thinking it can go back to member states' cap in hand. E military headquarters plans backed by Baroness Ashton. Baroness Ashton is a key ally in a French plot to create a Brussels military headquarters that will build on existing European Union military missions. Lady Ashton, the EU foreign minister, has signalled to Paris she will go against British opposition if France can win other allies this winter, a senior defence minister source has told the Daily Telegraph. Now this is a clear move towards military integration and a single European army. This is part of the rapidly unfolding Federal United States of Europe, which Barroso talked about in his State of the Union address. And indeed, our system programme, Eurocon, looked at this in depth. It's all on our website, theunit.com. EU rules change will bring more migrants. Ministers are powerless to stop tens of thousands more migrants heading to Britain after a new EU borders shake-up, Theresa May has admitted. The Home Secretary yesterday warned the government is legally unable to block Romanian and Bulgarian citizens from coming to the UK under an expansion of EU freedom of movement. Instead, she vowed to curb access to benefits and NHS treatment for EU immigrants in attempt at making Britain a less attractive destination for these new arrivals. Now we know that that's just not going to happen, because as Ian Duncan Smith said only last week, the EU has primacy over mandating who does and does not get access to UK benefits. See our story, Let All European Migrants Claim Benefits, insists Brussels. Now, I've put links to both the stories in the description below. Multi-annual financial framework for the years 2014 to 2020. The Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, the TFEU, mandates that the Council must adopt a regulation laying down multi-annual financial framework and all items of revenue and expenditure of the Union must be shown in that budget. The report notes that negotiations on multi-annual financial framework 2014 to 2020 are taking place during a time of social and economic difficulty. As such, the EU must not be seen to be adding any further financial burden to taxpayers. However, it should be seen that the EU budget in its efforts to promote investments in growth and jobs and helping member states tackle losses of competitiveness, rising unemployment and poverty, and that these may be part of the solution to enable Europe to emerge from the current economic crisis. Now surely this is going to be an impossible task for a union that has been unable to have its own budgets and financial affairs signed off by the official auditors for more than a decade. From a Tuesday column, in the Articles section, Trevor Coleman writes, Commissioners. Having served as a police officer, I am more than interested in the November election of police and crime commissioners. 
for each of the 43 forces in England and Wales. But why is this happening? First, there doesn't appear to be any desire by the public for this. In a recent poll conducted by Victim Support, 80% doubted the commissioners would improve treatment or help victims. 90% were unclear as to the commissioner's role, whilst 50% were unaware that there was to be an election. In my opinion, this emphasis on national activity continues the process of reducing forces, first to nine regional constabularies and eventually to a national body. The unique British police service of which we were so proud is gradually being diminished and dismantled. And you can read Trevor's full letter in the Tuesday column section of theunit.com. Well, that's all from me at The Unit Nightly News. You can, of course, get lots more news stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our username is The E Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. Finally, of course, you can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus anytime. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.